Hi, guys. We're going to give everybody a few minutes to get logged in here. Let me get uh, everything situated. Okay. Looks like we've got 12 people joining us. Hi, 15. Wow. Thanks, guys, for joining in. This is an exciting uh, Thursday afternoon. Hi, Esther. Hi, Rita. Oh, I like that little character that's cute. Hi. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Yalitza. Hi, nice to see you. Hi, Schneider and Sandy. How are you guys doing today? Hope everybody's having a great Thursday. It is almost Friday. Yay. Hi, Abby and uh, Berland. Hi. Telesmean and Emma. Hi. How are you guys? Oh, hug back to you, Emma. Um, good. I'm glad everybody's doing well today. Awesome. So the way this works, for those of you who are new, who haven't joined us before, the way this works is that this is a live question and answer session. So any questions you have, feel free to type them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them and to um, put you on the right path. So if you've got any questions, make sure that you put them on uh, the chat and I'll answer them for you. Yulitza says... Uh, my professor uses all your videos to teach us how to do our skills for Prometrics. Awesome. I love to hear that. We're being used by schools all over the country. And uh, that's one of the reasons that I do this is so that I can connect um, directly with the students that are watching our videos and, and um, I don't have a direct connection with. So this gives me an opportunity to kind of get to know you guys uh, a little bit more. Um, you're more familiar with me because you see me on the screen. Emma says, hi, Miss Patty. I couldn't find where to renew my license. Is it possible you can send me the link? Emma, um, a couple questions about that. Are you in Florida? So that's my first question. If you're in Florida, head over to my website. It's the number four, Y-O-U-R-C-N-A dot com. So I'm going to type it in the chat for you. So for your CNA dot com, you just go to that link and under after certification. So along the top, I've got a whole, you know, I've got CNA training, uh, testing, and then I have an after certification section. If you click on that, I actually have step-by-step -step instructions that are going to walk you through exactly how to um, renew your CNA certification in Florida. There's a video there, there's links there, everything is there for you. So that will help you, Emma. And, um, it's a whole lot easier for you to do that and follow along step by step. Okay. Um, great question. And it is renewal time. Uh, one of the things you may not know is that our renewals um, this year were extended out. You got a little bit more time for renewal. Um, they did extend it out a little bit uh, because of COVID. But I would go ahead and renew as soon as you can. That way you don't put it off and then accidentally forget because that can be a real problem. Uh, Yulitza says, love your video. So helpful. Thank you, Yulitza. I'm real, I really appreciate that. Nancy, Nancy from New York. Nice to meet you. And yes, New York uses Prometrics. So everything that we create will work for you. Uh, Madalena uh, says in Florida. Yay. I love Florida. I'm a Florida native. I was born and bred here. Um, been here all my life. Uh, I like the sunshine. Don't like the bugs though. Um, W. Patterson says, hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Um, anybody have any specific questions for me? While you're typing your questions, and I'm going to give a shout out to uh, the people that put on our YouTube channel that they passed the test this week. So I want to give a, a congratulations shout out to Carrie Williams. Congratulations. George O.B. Airy. Maria Trotter, and I've been working with Maria for uh, quite some time on getting her um, ready to test. She had a very unfortunate 
education experience with a different school. So um, I was really trying to help her out and get her up to speed. And she passed this week. So great job, Maria. I'm super, super proud of you. And Bella186 also let us know that she passed the state exam as well. So when you guys take the state exam and you pass it, if you leave me a little um, something, a comment on my YouTube channel and say, hey, I passed, I'll give you a shout out too. And that way we can all congratulate you on a job well done. And I know you guys are all going to be fantastic. Um, Rosita says, hi, hi. Mitzi, Mitzi says, I've heard stories from CNAs that even though the care plan states the task is a two person lift, they often lift by themselves because no one wants to help. How would you deal with that situation? Oh, that's a good one, Mitzi. And I, I am completely familiar with what you're, you're talking about. Most mechanical lifts require two people to operate them, one person to work the controls. So let's say this is the control. I know it's a calculator. But let's say this is the controller for the lift. My attention is going to be on this controller to make sure that I'm hitting the right buttons, that I'm not putting the patient in jeopardy. But if I'm paying attention to this controller, who's paying attention to the patient? And that's where that second person comes in. So anytime we're using a mechanical lift, the care plan will always say two person assist. The reason is we need one person to be focused on the controller. So they're hitting the right buttons and not hurting the patient. But the other person needs really to be focused on the patient, making sure that the sling is, um, you know, drawing up correctly so that the patient isn't hanging upside down, which can happen, um, or the straps or chains are pinching into their skin, or um, something may not be connected right and the patient falls out. There's a lot of risks that go into working with mechanical lifts. That's why the care plans always say a two-person assist. Now, the problem is you got to find that second person. And a lot of times CNAs don't work very well together. Um, and that's, that's a real problem. If you can't get another CNA to help you, and the care plan says two person assist and you decide to do it on your own because you can't get anyone to help. You say, well, there, there's nothing I can do here. I got to do this by myself. And you help the patient using a mechanical lift and something goes wrong. You are liable for that. You don't want to put yourself in that position. I mean, bad enough that the page, something went wrong and the patient may have gotten hurt over it. I mean, that's horrible. How do you sleep at night over that? But the real problem from your standpoint is that there's no one to take liability of that except for you because you did not follow the care plan. So be really, really careful there. The reason it says two person assist is because we really wanna make sure that somebody has their eyes on the patient. Um, if you can't find another helper, another CNA to help you with that, then you need to go get the nurse and you need to tell them, I've got a two person assist. The care plan says two person assist. I don't have a second person. I need you to come help me. And that nurse has to come help you. I mean, that that's part of their job. If they refuse to, then you need to refuse the skill because your job is to follow the care plan, the whole care plan and nothing but that care plan. If the nurse does not allow you to do that, then you can't do that skill. Does that make sense? I hope that helps. Um, w. Patterson says, my question is, if I fail one part, do I have to pay again for the retake? Yes. Unfortunately, nothing in life is free. If it was, if they let you retest without paying, no one would take it seriously the first time. You'd kind of use it as a practice test. And then testing would take forever. Because then you have everybody that's retesting, 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 because it's always free. So that's not a good model. They really need to make you pay. So you pay attention. <laughs> That's kind of the way it works. But um, you don't have to pay as much, though. That That's kind of the, the, the good thing about it. You only pay for the part that you have to retake. So let's say that you have to retake the skills part. Um, you, for some reason, did something. You didn't follow the care plan. You, you weren't successful at passing the skills. Then you would only pay for the skills part, which is, I believe, $105 in Florida. So you would just pay to take that portion. If you have to take both sections, the written and the skills, then you would have to pay the full amount. 
if you're just taking the written, I think the written's like 50 bucks. It's it's not too terribly bad um, to take. The skills to repeat it is 105, I believe, in Florida. Mitzi says, okay, thank you so much. I really hope that helped, Mitzi. I know it's a real problem out there. And the more short-staffed we are, the worse the problem gets. Guys, we're in a huge shortage of CNAs. I mean, nationwide, they're just, there are way more jobs than there are people to fill the jobs. And we need CNAs. And that's one of the reasons that I do this is to help get people interested in healthcare so we can kind of fill those positions. So if you've got any friends or family or um, anyone that you know that would be good at this job, recruit them because that will help produ produce enough um manpower that people will be willing to help you with those two person lifts because we won't be spread quite so thin. So make sure you're recruiting for our um, industry as well. Always be a positive influence out there when you're talking about your profession. Um, if you're, you know, always complaining and saying, oh, this is horrible and I don't like where I work and I don't like this and that, nobody's going to want to join our profession and it's not going to get any better until we have enough staffing to make it better. So make sure that you're portraying our industry in a positive light so that we can recruit other people. Um, I hope that helps. Elevate the profession. Um, Deanne says, hi, Deanne. Thanks for joining us today. Deanne says, I see that a few jobs are hiring in the area that state no experience required as they'll train you. Are these kinds of places legit? Just want to make sure. Yes. There's a lot of places that you don't have to be certified to work. Um, you have to have a state certification to work in nursing homes. That's it. All other places are going to decide based on the type of patients that they take care of and the type of work that you need to do. So if you're going to go into home care, you don't have to be certified as a CNA. In a lot of uh, positions, you can work as a homemaker companion, which means that you're providing um what I call friendly neighbor services. So, you know, picking up, doing dishes, taking them to doctor's appointments, um, making, you know, small meals like sandwiches or heating up soup, just simple meals. You're not, you know, there to provide a five-star restaurant service, but just to make sure that they can get some nutrition, um, maybe going to the grocery store for them. Those are all un- certified positions. Assisted living is another one where you do not have to be certified to work and they will train you. Um, sometimes mental health units will hire uncertified people and they will provide training. So there are a lot of positions available that don't necessarily require your CNA. Although if you have your certification, you'll be able to take on a little bit higher level of patient care and you usually get paid a little bit more too. So remember that that certification is going to help you. Now in hospitals, some hospitals will hire you as an uncertified um, individual and they will provide training. For instance, HCA hospitals um, throughout the country a lot of them have a program called a Star Tech program where they take on individuals that don't have any training, um, no experience, and they put them through an internal training program that's designed to um, give them the skills that they need, and they're able to work as a patient care tech. Uh, so that might be something that you want to look at if you're near an HCA hospital, and they actually use our program to do that. So um, that's kind of kind of interesting. There's a lot of nursing homes that can train you and then send you out for certification once you're trained. So yes, take advantage, um, Deanne, of some of those positions. If they're offering free training, that might be an excellent way to get certified without having a whole lot of um, money coming out of your pocket. So that might be something to look into. Randall says, your videos are wonderful. I passed a few years and 
thanks to you. Oh, awesome, Randall. Congratulations. I love success stories. That lets me know that what I'm doing behind this computer is working. Sometimes it helps me to connect to other people because all of my time is spent back here behind screens. And I forget that there's people on the other side of the screens that are benefiting from this. So I love these question and answer sessions. They give me an opportunity to really kind of connect with you and find out what your specific challenges are so that when I'm writing these programs and creating these videos, um, and creating the book, we're addressing your specific needs as well. Um, Kreef Army Wife TV says, hi, I'm waving back. Hi. Um, let's see here. Raquel says, uh, I'm still waiting for my paperwork to be corrected in order to test. My worry is forgetting my skills. That's a very good concern. Um, and if you're not practicing, chances are you probably will forget a few things. If you go back to my animated videos and watch um, all of the principles, it'll remind you of the things that are important. In fact, one of the things that I was working on today is I'm making a t-shirt that has all of my principles on it. Um, and it's going to be kind of a fun t-shirt, but it's going to go over all the things that you need to remember when you're testing. Things like um, if you're going to get water to bathe the patient, make sure you check it, but they need to check it too. If the patient's feet hit the floor, we talk about their shoes. Every skill starts with the opening and every opening starts with a knock. Um, make sure that you read the care plan before you start the skill, because for us, it's all about the care plan, the whole care plan and nothing but the care plan. So all of my principles, if you can remember those, um, you'll be fine on the state exam. If you have our book, this book, the four-year CNA uh, skills study guide, if you've got this book, the principles that are in this book on page, hold on, let me pull it up here for you. Uh, page 19, these principles, this is what I'm talking about. If you just go through this and keep reading this, it'll remind you of all of the important steps that you need to do on the state exam. But the biggest thing to remember is that you need to focus on the patient, not so much the steps. If you're focusing on the patient and you're following the care plan, you'll be okay. Practice, however, will certainly help. So grab anybody you've got hanging around your house and be practicing on them. Um, but uh, Raquel, I um, wish you all the luck in the world. If you've got any questions along the way, please come back and let us know. And I'll keep my fingers crossed that your paperwork gets sorted out for you. Um, let's see here. Kimmy says, just tested yesterday and waiting on results at 6 p.m. Oh my gosh, that's nail biting. I know you're probably sitting on pins and needles wondering if you passed or not. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for you and hope that you did great. Um, Deanne says, that's great to know as I'm in Tampa. <laughs> yeah, I'm just north of Tampa, actually. I'm in Spring Hill. Um, let's see. Uh, Derlise says, hi. Hi, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, Grief Army or Creef Army Wife, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that, um, says, I'm in CNA class now. I'm in North Carolina. Awesome. Very good. Um, you know, pay attention in class, but don't forget, you know, in class, it's super easy to get so caught up in the steps, right? And, and my students were practicing yesterday. I was sitting in class watching them and I really, you know, kind of saw this with them. They were so caught up in the individual steps and trying to remember what comes first and what comes next and what do I do here? And it, they were just really bogged down in those steps that they didn't really look at the patient that they were doing those steps on. So the patient was too near the edge of the bed, which we all know is, is a bad thing, right? You don't want your patient too near the end of the bed, but, or the side of the bed. But if you, this, the steps are important. Okay. I don't want to minimize that. The steps are important, but don't get so caught up in those steps that you forget the whole purpose of being here, right? The whole thing is about providing safe, compassionate care to the patient. If you're so focused on those steps that you're not looking at the patient, you're really kind of missing the point. So when you're waiting to test, when, when you're, you know, that nail biting time, oh my gosh, my test is coming up and you're practicing and you're trying to get the steps down, take a step back, take a breath, and look, 
Does your patient look comfortable? Do they look safe? Do they understand what you're, you're doing? And we tend to forget this in training because your instructor is probably hammering the steps at you, right? You got to do this. You have to do this. You've got to do this. And you get, you know, you kind of get hyper-focused on those steps. And, you know, as an instructor, I have to remember to take a step back and to teach you to look at the patient. So when you're in class, just, just try to remember that one small piece of it. Don't forget about the patient. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I got my new cup. It's so cool. Um, any other questions? So Nancy says, if you study and it's hard to read. Uh, going to take the test in New York. Can you work in Florida seasonal? Okay. All right. I know what you're asking. So Nancy, the answer to that actually is yes, but not for all states. Okay. So you got to, I've got to separate this out a little bit. So if you're in New York and you have your CNA certification in New York, you can contact the board of nursing in Florida and say, Hey, I'm a New York CNA. I am going to be down in the summer. I'd like to have a CNA certification in Florida so that I can work while I'm there. Florida will most likely say, sure, no problem. Fill out this form. We'll do a background check on you and pay us a little bit of money because nothing is free, right? Pay us a little bit of money and we will give you a Florida CNA certification based on the fact that you have one already in New York. So that works out really well. That process is called reciprocity. It does not work in all states, though. Um, there are some states that say not so fast. No, in order to work here, you have to go through our tests so we can make sure you know what you're doing. And then other states go a step further and they say, no, we don't take anybody's training or testing. If you want to be a CNA here, you have to start from scratch. So the moral of this story is that if you want to practice in another state, then you need to contact that state, let them know where you're currently certified and ask what the reciprocity um, process is for the state you want to go to. So let's say you wanted to go to Tennessee. Tennessee doesn't allow anybody else's training or testing. You would have to start from scratch. And that would be something you would want to know before you make your plans to go to that area if working there is going to be important to you. So if you go over to my website, remember it's foryourcna.com. So go to my website and I actually have a link um, under, I believe it's under uh, after certification. Um, I have all of the state boards of nursing and CNA registries listed there state by state. So uh, go check that out. And you can actually click on the links. It's all linked up. So you can actually click on the link and it'll take you directly to that state's page. Um, so you can interact with them and ask your questions. So hopefully that'll help you. It's kind of a one-stop shop. Just go to my page and it'll link you wherever you need to go. Okay. Um, let's see. Yaliza says, can I take my certification from New York to Alabama? Great question. I really don't know Alabama's specific requirements and they change all the time. Um, COVID changed a few actually. So you'd want to check with that state directly. I don't want to give you the wrong information. So check directly with that state. But you know, something that was going around a couple of years ago that I want to talk about. Um, some people were talking about getting a national certification. Guys, there is no national certification for CNA. There is no single certification that you can get that will cover every state in our, our nation. There is nothing like that. CNA is still regulated entirely by the states. Now there is something for RNs and LPNs called the compact. Um, that is something different. It's only for RNs and, and LPNs right now. Um, but that is something a little bit different. It does not apply to CNAs, but it's called the nurse compact. Um, that will allow, if you buy into it, allow you to 
practice, you know, nursing in a select number of states that have all agreed to the same standards and legal requirements. Um, but then we don't have anything like that for CNAs right now. And the, the real problem is that you've got different laws. So in some states, CNAs are not allowed to take vital signs. In other states, vital signs is a big part of what CNAs do. So there's different legal requirements for the same certification state by state. And that's one of the things that kind of plays into this. So check with the state that you want to go to um, directly to find out what, you know, what the, the requirements are. Marie, that's a great question, Marie. Can you have both a New York and a Florida certificate? Absolutely. You can have 40 different CNA certifications if you want to. The problem is that you have to renew all of them. So remember that renewal process is going to vary state by state. Um, here in Florida, you have to work as a CNA for pay at least once in the renewal cycle. And you have to complete a certain amount of in-service hours or continuing education to renew your certification. Other states will only let you renew if you work for a nursing home full time. So the renewal requirements are going to vary greatly state to state, which means that um, if you have more than one certification, in more than one state. So let's say New York and Florida, you've got to know the renewal requirements of both and make sure that you meet them in order to keep that certification. Um, and it's not quite as easy as it, as it seems on the surface. There's a lot of juggling there to do. Um, okay. So let's see here. Um, okay. So you let's, uh, let me uh, type that in for you here. It's going to be for your CNA.com. That's my website yourcna.com. And up at the top of the screen, just click on after certification. And I've got a uh, board of nursing um, links on there. So just um, go on to my website, you'll be able to find it. Deanne says, this question is trivial, but I'm curious, are we really filing our partner's nails during the hand skill? Or are we just simulating that action? I don't want to mess up my partner's nails. Oh, great question, Deanne. That is actually a really good question. Yes, you are really filing. The only skill that we are simulating for is bedpan. That's it. So for bedpan, nobody's really going to be undressed. And nobody's really peeing in the bedpan. We're going to pretend. That's the only simulation skill there is. Everything else you're physically going to do. So when it, um, if the care plan tells you to feed a resident a snack, you're really going to feed somebody, probably pudding or applesauce. Um, if it says to do range of motion, you're really going to do range of motion. If it has you do mouth care, you're really going to brush somebody's teeth. And if it's hand and nail care, you're really going to file someone's nails. Now, you're filing the rough edges. So if your partner, the person that you're doing the test with has acrylic nails on and um, you don't want to mess those up, you're going to, you know, feel across and then you're going to find one that is um, not completely smooth and you need to find at least one that's not completely smooth. And then you're going to file toward the center. But remember when we're filing, okay, so this is a nail file. Let's say I'm, I'm going to file this patient's nail here, right? So when you're filing, you want to go in one direction toward the center like this. So this side would go this way. So you're not going to take the nail and actually file it back and forth like this, like what we do with our own nails, right? It's one way toward the center this way, toward the center that way, and then straight across to file off that point. Um, so when you're filing, you're not really filing down a whole lot, but that brings me to something else, which is kind of interesting. When you go in on testing day and they check you in and you're there with seven other people that are there to test those evaluators, the people that are going to be grading you, they're actually looking at you guys. Um, for a couple of different things. So let's say, um, Deanne, that you got uh, hand and nail care and 
you have to do that on another person. So as they're looking around the room to try to pick your partner, who they're going to partner you up with, they're going to look for somebody that does not have acrylic nails on and preferably somebody who hasn't chewed their nails down to the nub, right? To give you a uh, kind of a fair shot at this. Um, if that's not possible, then, you know, you may have somebody with acrylic nails, but they try hard. If you've got a hand and nail care, not to give you a, uh, patient, the person playing the patient that has acrylic nails. Okay. I hope that helped. Um, Elite, El, Elena, did I say that right? I hope I said that right. Um, hi, I need your help, please, for the two skills that have changed. Okay. So there's two skills on th that I have videos for on YouTube, wheelchair and ambulate. These two skills have a new um, or have a step in them that's not reflected in the videos. There, it's in the book. So my book has a step-by-step -step instructions. The the what I'm about to tell you is in the book. It's just not in the video. So with ambulate with a gate belt. So this means we're standing somebody up, we're walking them five steps, turning around, walking them back to the chair. Ambulate with a gate belt. The evaluator is going to put a rolling table or a chair or something in your path before you ever start the skill. Your job is to move that something, whether it's the table or a chair or whatever it is, out of the way before you stand the patient up. The second skill that has kind of a uh, an omission in it is transferring out of bed and into a wheelchair. Okay, so the first one's ambulate, the second one's transfer. For both of those, when you turn the patient around and you're getting ready to help them sit down, okay, so ambulate, we've walked them five steps, turn around, came back. When we're going to help them sit in the chair, they need to know that that chair is behind their legs. I mean, think about that. You wouldn't just back up to a chair and, 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 pray it's there and sit down in it, right? If you didn't know for sure that there is a chair behind you when you go to sit, you would be afraid of falling. So you'd probably stiffen up, resist a little bit. It's not going to go smooth. So what we want to do anytime, whether we're transferring the patient out of bed and into a wheelchair or whether we're ambulating them and helping them sit back in the chair after, Anytime we're going to sit the patient down, you want to get them to back up so that their knees hit that chair. That way they know it's there and they're not going to resist. So that's kind of a step that we need to vocalize. Okay. We need to say something like, can you feel the chair behind your legs? Or I need you to back up so that that chair is right behind you to sit in. You need to vocalize something about this and they're going to check you off on that. Okay. So it, it's going to be a checkpoint. So you don't see that in my video. So those are the only two things that um, have changed since I did the video originally. And we are getting ready to retape those sometime this summer. Okay. And uh, Derly says, can you share the link, please? Um, I, not sure, uh, Derlise, which link you want. Is it my website link? So I'll type that in again. It's foryourcna.com. It's the number four, Y-O-U-R-C-N-A dot com. Go on to my website. I've got tons and tons and tons of information. All of my skills videos are on there. All of my animated videos are on there. Um, there's the contact information for the board of nursing. There's renewal um, uh, information on there. All kinds of stuff is on there. It'll certainly help you. Um, I've also got things on there that you can buy. I mean, you can go on and buy the book. You can buy the care plan sets, which are these. These are the actual care plan sets. This is what you would get during the state exam. They're going to give you one of these. There's 11. You will get one. You'll get one of these. Um, you can buy these. I've got. I've actually got a brand new card game that I created up there, and it's it's super fun. 
Um, we're getting a lot of really good feedback on there. There's flashcards, all kinds of stuff on there. You can go on and take a look. Um, but we've got a ton of free information for you. I mean, everything you need to pass the state exam is on my website, all the videos and everything. Now, if you want it in a logical order, we have a course for that where you can go through and it'll save you a ton of time and focus in, uh, in on the things that you need and what you need to know to pass the test. So we do have the course as well. But, um, you know, our website has just a ton of free stuff for you as well. And stay tuned on YouTube. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll have that T-shirt I was telling you about. I'm having a lot of fun doing the graphic arts on that. Um, that's kind of fun for me too. Very creative. All right. Anybody else have any questions today? Any other questions? For those of you getting ready to test, good luck. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. If you've got any questions, please make sure you tune in on Thursdays at 3. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have and help point you in the right direction. Remember, it's up to you to elevate our profession. Make sure that you are presenting a professional image um, so that we can recruit others. And that way we don't have to work as hard. Okay. All right. Well, it was nice to meet all of you. Good luck. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye.